Pros do it right to take their business to the next level by relying on trusted brands to get the job done. Lowe's is here to help and help you save. For your next stain job, get a gallon of Valspar One Coat Transparent Stain Plus Sealer starting at $35.98. And we now offer the Little Giant King Combo Ladder, the world's first step, extension, and leaning ladder, giving you the flexibility to do just about any job for only $159. For trusted brands that make the job easier, do it right for less. Start with Lowe's, U.S. only. Hello, my friends, this is Andy over at today's CBD and wellness podcast. I'm coming to you live from Brea, California. Well, maybe not live when you're listening to this on the podcast, but uh, it's just what I normally say. And so there you go. I said it again. Uh, but um, uh, I, I'm so happy to bring this particular episode to you because this one um, really uh, was an issue that I dealt with for gosh, many years in, in high school and then coming into college. And then as I uh, retired from as a police officer, um, there were a few times where these things, these horrible, miserable things called lies uh, would creep into my thoughts. And, um, and they're just lies, lie, lie, lies, 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 lies. There we go. <laughs> and uh, I, I wanted to bring them up because I think that, uh, you know, we could talk about nutrition and, uh, you know, and food and dietary supplements and CBD and stuff like that. But unless you are, uh, you know, making sure that your thoughts are not dragging you down, then it, I think it's going to be hard for you to be a, in a place of wellness because the lies that you're telling yourself that keep you down and that keep you from being your very best is one of those things that's harming relationships. It's harm, harming your ability to, uh, eat well, right? It's harming your ability to, um, to get exercise and work out because these lies you're telling yourself are dragging you down and it affects everything. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I, um, there's an issue that will come up and I think it also has to do with forgiveness, but it, it isn't sometimes until you forgive yourself that you can stop telling yourself a lie because the, a lie, because the lie is the thing that's keeping you in this comfortable place, this comfortable place of sitting on a couch, of, of doing nothing, of not putting yourself out there, of not um, challenging yourself. Because it's easier to say the lies that, uh, there's gonna be nine lies that I'm gonna be talking about here shortly, but it's those lies that you're telling yourself that allow you to not move forward, to not make a difference in the world and not make a, a change in your life, in your relationship. And, uh, I, you know, I'm on my second marriage. And so you're probably thinking, well, what's this guy who's been through two marriages talking to me about something that uh, he obviously couldn't do? <laughs> it's because I know, right? We learn most from our mistakes. I'm not sure that um, necessarily uh, I was going to be able to save those marriages with this information that I have now, but it surely would have helped. Uh, and I, now I can look back and say, if I did, I could look back and say, you know what? I even addressed that. And that still wasn't going to save this marriage because the issues that caused the divorce were greater. Um, and again, that's easy for me to say, right? You don't know what they were. And, you know, I can and come back with all kinds of reasonings why they didn't work out, but I'm just telling you, uh, it, just trust me, uh, the, the things had to do with uh, uh, other issues and, and not particularly this. But I, I also think that it may have helped. And there is a chance that somewhere we may we may be we may have had the ability. There we go to um, overcome some of the challenges that we were having in our marriage. So uh, let's go to number one really quick. Oh, you know, before I do that, I'm so sorry, but I have to tell you about today's Viseo.com. Today's Viseo.com. That's where you're going to go to get some of the wellness products that I talk about um, on these podcasts that will literally change your life. I've been using Viseo's products now for about six or seven months, and I have not felt this great in my entire life. I, I, I'm convinced. I want to even look back to my teenage years. I don't think I felt this strong, this um, clear-headed. I slept last night eight hours. 
I could have probably stayed in bed another hour <laughs> uh, because of the products that I'm taking. The And again, the wellness path that I'm on, those, these things go hand in hand. If you are hitting on all cylinders in regard to your health, in regard to your sleep, in regard to your mental outlook on life and um, hopefulness and uh and desire to achieve goals of all those things are happening. It, it just makes life that much better. And again, for me, it started with CBD oil. It was the gateway to my wellness. I began to use other products at Viseo. And so uh, you'll want to make sure and, and go ahead and just look at that website. There's no obligation by going to the website. You go to todayviseo.com and you'll begin to see some of those products. Now, if you're interested in CBD, you're going to go to todayscbdoil.com. There's still, um, that is another product of a sale, but because of some regulations that are going on in the world, you have to uh, separate uh, those two things. And so that at least the sale had to, to make sure if something happened that we wouldn't lose access to the other products. So they have two websites. And then one last thing is strategic uh, marketing today, strategic marketing today. Uh, that is a program I put together to show people how to use all of these tools I use to create marketing and interest in what it is I'm doing. And um, we'll talk about that more in another broadcast. But that that's a, definitely a sponsor that I would love for you to take advantage of. Right now, it's only $9.99 a month. That will be changing. So I'd get in right now and it will, it will help you with a whole bunch of stuff. All right. So let's go ahead and get into the nine lies that we tell ourselves. And, you know, you may be telling yourself one or two or all of them. I don't know. Uh, but um, uh, you got to make sure and look at these and really understand that this is a lie uh, that you're telling yourself. If it's keeping you uh, from progressing, either financially or in wellness. I'm gonna go ahead and bring down this lower third and get rid of that. I'll put that one back up there. And uh, all right, so let's start with number one. Number one is I am not good enough. You know, and that I put that number one, I should have went backwards. I should have went 10, nine, eight, because this one's huge. Uh, this is one that really affected me uh, uh, for a very long time. And I'll tell you where my life started. It started, uh, you know, as a, as a child, and um, my dad, now I'm not going to blame, I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to place blame on my dad. However, <laughs> um, I was the youngest of four. Uh, we were all five years apart. So my oldest sister was 15 years older than me. My next, uh, my brother was then 10 years older than my other sister was five years older. And so by the time I came around, I think my, my parents were pretty much done with kids. <laughs> and so I was, uh, you know, I was like kind of what they would call a latchkey kid where I would come from home from school and no one was home. Um, you know, my older, uh, 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 my older siblings were married and out of the home. My mom and dad both worked. So when I came home from school at three o'clock, they didn't get home until five, six, seven o'clock at night. And so I would be a latchkey kid from the time of about kindergarten on. Yes, very young. I know, but that was just the way it was done back then. And so there was that aspect. And then as I got older, my dad, you know, didn't come to, you know, I played football. I was a pole vaulter. I was ranked number two in the state of California in pole vaulting in high school. And uh, yet my dad never came to any of those things. And then when I would come home with an award, he'd say, who'd you steal that from? And so, and that, you know, Again, I, I believe my dad loved me, but I just think that, again, he was at a different place in his life and just really, he was just not interested whatsoever. And so here's kind of where this begins to start, right? Where I um, I kept trying to get my dad's approval, but yet could did, could not seem to do it. As long We never told each other we loved each other. We never said, um, you, know, uh, you know, I'm proud of you. We just didn't speak that way. It was just like, what do you want? Um, you want to get out of the house, you're irritating me. It was a lot of that kind of stuff. You know, did we laugh and joke? Yes. There were times in laughing and joke. Um, I wasn't getting, well, he used a belt for <laughs> corrections, but, um, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't abused in that way, but you know, I, I think that's where this stems from. And at least talking to certain psychiatrists and psychologists, up, you know, as I went through you know, being a police officer and other needs that I had by uh, going to a psychiatrist, is that this continued to come up and, and believing that I am not good enough or worthy of success or achieving something haunt, has haunted me for a very long time and, 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 and has for many years up until just a few years ago. And I'm sure it still creeps in there from time to time where I start to get success and then I freeze up and I stop or I, I begin to question and doubt myself. And, I, and it comes from a, a belief, a lie that I am not good enough. And um, that's a lie. And I had to come to terms with that. It, it really happened in a in a Bible study. Uh, you may or may not have uh, a, you know a a 
a, a desire to hear about God and the Bible, that kind of stuff. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. However, it was for me, it did happen in a Bible study that I was in an eight month Bible study with a, a, a group of men. And this is one of the things that we talked about. And so uh, it, it allowed me to forgive my dad for the things he used to say when I was young, forgive him for not being there. Cause I, I it, it haunted me that he never came to any of the pole vaulting. And again, I was ranked number two in the state. You would have thought that at some point he would have came uh, to one of the events because I was pole vaulting all the time. And so I had to really sit down and uh, first um, forgive my dad and then forgive myself for keeping the lie alive. And so that was huge for me in this Bible study is that I had to, because nobody told me to forgive myself. <laughs> and I had to righteously stand in front of a mirror and said, you know what? I forgive you for not thinking that you're good enough, but you are, you are good enough. And you can do these things and you can succeed and you can have success and you can, you deserve all the things that come to you if you put in the time and effort and, and work hard enough. And when it comes, you're good enough to accept it. You're good enough to do it. You're good enough to choose whatever it is you want to do in life and go forward because you're good enough and you need to stop telling yourself that lie. So that was huge. You are good enough. I'm telling you right now, you are. And you need to forgive yourself. You need to forgive whoever in your past who's told you that you're not good enough, whether it's a, a spouse, a family member, a friend, uh, a boss or a colleague that you work with because they're, in all those walks, somebody at some point may tell you something negative about you and then you begin to believe that lie and it gets stuck and you can't get rid of it. But you are, you definitely are good enough. Number two, I can't do this and that. I can't. I hate I can't. I, I just despise I can't. I don't let my kids say I can't. Uh, you can and you will if you are motivated enough to do it, if you are desirous uh, enough of the outcome by going through it and doing it. If it is something that's in your heart and your desire, you can do it. Now, you may not be able to do it to a certain extent based on some limitations. So for instance, let's say that I want to be a professional hockey player. I'm now 57 years old and I love hockey. I can play hockey. I've scored goals. I can play defense, kind of. Um, I, I, I've i loved to play hockey. I played uh, in the police Olympics all over the world. I played in Austria. I played in um, uh, Whistler, Canada, right? But if I were to say today, I, I decided I want to play in the NHL as a professional hockey player, there is a limitation. Why? Age, um, skill level, uh, and things like that. But if I wanted to play hockey and I want to play at a high level, I can play at a high level at my age group in a, in a league that is, um, you know, a strong league. And I just need to put in the effort. I need to go back to work and, and train and get ready. And I can go to a certain level. And the only limitation is just certain physical aspects and uh, where I'm starting in my life. So you can do it. There, there is going to be some limitations. You got to accept those. Like I want to be an astronaut. All right. That's great. And I probably could because if I had enough money, I could pay to be on one of those rockets that's going to go up and visit the uh, the space station that uh, I think it's Elon Musk may have available or something like that. I can't remember. SpaceX, I think, has um, a program coming up where you can pay something like, uh, you know, half a million dollars and you can get on one of those rockets and go into space. So you could be an astronaut. You just got to now come up with the money. So what are you going to do to come up with the money? Well, I'm going to join uh, an MLM. I'm going to join Viseo and Andy at Overcome Nation, and I'm going to make my money, and I'm going to get on that, that, that rocket ship. You can do it, right? You can do it. There's so many things that you can do. There are so few things that you can't do. Uh, we, I just listened to a great speaker, uh, Eric Widemir. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to blow up his name. I'll have to put it somewhere. That way I can feel better about not knowing his last name. But he spoke at the last Viseo convention that I was at. And um, he's bl a blind man who climbed to Mount Everest. He's a blind man who went down a, a, a very high level rapids in a kayak and survived. He rock climbs on a regular basis. He is blind, blind, blind as a bat. And, um, and yet um, he, can, he climbs those things and, and, and he does them. So it's a lie that you're telling yourself that you can't. You can. You just need to put in the effort. You have to make sure that you put uh, put it in your heart and you have to desire it beyond anything else and you can do it. And there are ways to go about doing something and you just need to take it one step at a time. Uh, we're going to talk about another uh, one of these a lie that you're telling you that will help you in this particular lie and succeed. Uh, number three, 
it needs to be perfect. Oh, that's a horrible lie. Now, I, I've never lived in this world. I've never told myself this lie. <laughs> Uh, imperfect is good enough. All right. Just get it done. Do not wait for something. It'll never be perfect. It'll never be perfect. I'm telling you, if you, uh, you know, this book right here that I'm holding up, it's called Falco walking with God and a dog. It's my story on, on how I uh, came to believe in Jesus Christ through the work that, uh, uh, working with my dog. And when I was publishing this book, um, this is one of the first books where I had trouble letting it go and putting it out there to the public because I continue to try to fix it. Uh, and I even had an editor. And, and at some point you just have to say, all right, this is good enough. And you got to let it go because you can keep jacking with stuff forever, forever. Uh, and you may not ever get every punctuation grammar uh, issue correct. Uh, but um, at some point you just got to put it or else you'll never do it. Um, and you, uh, it doesn't need to be perfect. And if you have a thought about writing a book and you go, I write a book except for, I'll never know when it, you just got to write it, get it out there, get somebody to help you with it, uh, get an editor, get somebody to format it properly for you and you can do it. It doesn't need to be perfect. Get that out of your head right now. That is a lie. Nothing needs to be perfect. Nobody cares if it's perfect. As a matter of fact, when somebody see imperfection, they go, oh, thank God I'm, I'm with a normal person who's not perfect. Uh, perfection, if it ever exists, somebody who's trying to be perfect looks fake and looks flawed. And so I would make sure and guard yourself from that lie uh, and, and not put up with the lie that things need to be perfect. They don't. Just get started, get going. Don't worry about it. You know, if you're going to try to do a Facebook live, don't worry about it. The, the, the phone's probably going to fall over in the middle of it. You're going to, you know, lose your words. You're going to get, um, you know, cut off by the internet. Things are going to happen. Get over it. Get back on there again. Nothing's perfect and don't feel that it has to be perfect. All right. Number four, uh, I need to do it all in one huge step. No, huge lie. <laughs> uh, again, I, I don't know that I've ever lived in that in this lie, but it, it's one that um, a lot of people do. Uh, because I've, I've worked with other people in regard to their businesses and marketing and, and helping them get started and writing a book. And they think that they have to just do this whole big chunk of stuff and a big, huge step. No, take little tiny incremental steps and you will begin to get to where you need to be. It just starts with the very first step. You know, you don't have to climb Mar Mount Ar Everest. <laughs> Sorry. You don't have to climb Mount Everest um, to have a story. You have a you have a story. There's something in your life that you have something that somebody needs. Somebody needs to hear it. And so, so start with that first step and write that down if that's what it is. If it's uh, going to the gym, right? Well, gosh, I, I you know I, I need to be you know I need to be at the gym. I need to be working out. I need to be doing no. Just walk around the block. Just walk around the block and just get it started. Uh, and then the next time, make a you know a, two times around the block. Or maybe a week down the road, make a make it two times around, and don't think you have to get all do it all at once and just throw yourself in there, and then you tire yourself out, you get sore, you get you're in so much pain from how you've stretched your body, stretch your muscles, and you don't want to do it again. Take little tiny incremental steps. Don't take it all out in one huge thing, right? Don't uh, just throw yourself in there too too hastily and say I got to do all this stuff. When in fact, if you just would have taken your time, you would have got much further faster uh, than if you would have tried to do something in all big, one big chunk. You just can't do it. All right. Number five, I'm too old. Well, I surely don't live with that lie. Um, uh, I, I've never thought of myself as being too old. As a matter of fact, at some point, I'm going to have to start thinking of myself as being a little bit older because I still think that I'm in my 20s. And so if you are feeling that way, stop it. You don't, it doesn't matter when you're starting. It doesn't matter. You can start my business at Viseo and Overcome Nation, regardless of how old you are. If you're in your 60s or 70s, the time to start is now. You can pass it along to somebody else. As a matter of fact, it's a legacy uh, deal that when you get in, you could pass on your business to somebody uh, like your your grandchild or your child or uh, you know, uh, you know, a, a good friend who's helped you along the way. If you don't have, uh, you know, somebody that you can pass it on in your family, um, you're never too old to start something new, start a new habit. You can start preparing for the LA marathon at 67 years old. Don't worry about it. You can do it. You're not too old. Uh, there's all kinds of stories of people like, um, uh, Colonel Sanders. He started, uh, Kentucky fried chicken when he was in his fifties, I believe you had, um, uh, Whistler's mother who painted, uh, you know, that, that painting. I think she did it when she was like in her seventies or eighties. I'm not even sure how old she was, but she was much older. Uh, there's tons of stories of people starting new lives, new careers, new things that, that made them 
um, an authority or a niche in whatever it is that they did at a, a later stage in age. So never think that you're too old. That is ridiculous. That's a lie. All right. Number six, I don't have enough time. Another lie. You do. Uh, make more time. Uh, get rid of the things uh, and don't do the things that are wasting your time right now. There are things that you're doing on a daily basis. Um, and I'm not going to say Facebook right now because you're probably on Facebook watching this or you're on a podcast uh, and listening to this. <laughs> but those are good things, right? Good, good podcasts. Hopefully this is one of them that will help you move forward is what you want to spend your time doing. Don't waste your time on doing mindless stuff playing games. What is that farmland or something like that that used to be on Facebook? I'm not sure if it is it's still or not, but I know countless people were sending me, I think it's called farmland, uh, uh, invites to join them on farmland. I had no idea what farmland is. I haven't done it, but I know people that spend hours and hours on something just as silly. I still know people that are in their thirties and, uh, you know, that are playing games like, um, uh, my gosh, what's the, uh, my son plays it right now. Um, oh my gosh, it's on, uh, the PS4. Shoot, I forgot the name of it. Um, <laughs> he's on it all the time. Anyway, those games, those uh, games on PS4 and Xbox. If you're in your 30s and still playing games and you're you're not making a million dollars, so I'm not going to talk to those people that are, are playing Fortnite. That's not what its name is. Uh, on uh, Fortnite, if you're playing Fortnite and you're getting paid, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year to play Fortnite, then that's completely different. If you're making zero money and you're complaining about how you don't have any money and yet you're spending time playing Fortnite, there you go. Uh, that's where your time is going. You do have enough time. Sit down and work. Get rid of the things that, you know, the, the Netflix binges. Get rid of the the Facebook scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. The Instagram, just looking at the next, you know, how everybody else is beautiful and pretty and driving nice cars. Uh, and the reason you're not is because you're spending your time looking at everybody else do it, right? And so stop doing that. Maybe set a time, uh, set aside some relaxing time where you do it, but make sure that it's purposeful in the sense that you're setting enough time uh, or setting, a, uh, setting time um, aside to do something silly for relaxation, but spend more time doing the things that get you forward in, in, uh, in a, in a, uh, on the road, on the journey to doing something more meaningful that you're going to be proud of. And so you do have enough time. Just stop doing the things that you're doing that are wasting time. Uh, number seven, I don't have enough money. Uh, another lie. Uh, there's been plenty of times where I needed money to do something. I didn't have it and I was able to do it anyway. Just got creative, figured it out, borrowed some money. Um, I, I've gone to events, a three day event in San Diego. I've slept in my car because I couldn't afford a hotel. Um, uh, not having enough money is no excuse for moving forward. Not having money to get exercise or to eat right is all a lie that you're telling yourself. And so stop that lie and figure out how you're going to make a difference uh, in your life um, by figuring out how you're going to do it if you don't have what you perceive to be the money to do it. You can do it. You can figure it out. And um, And if that means getting a second job, then you'll get a second job and now you'll have more money. If you need to have a third job, you'll get a third job and now you're going to have more money. You know, when people are desperate, um, they will do almost anything. I There's mothers, uh, probably more mothers that get stuck in a situation where the husband's gone or the, the father of the child is gone, not helping them. And they have to not only raise a child, but they have to do it while doing two jobs. So I love these people, uh, you know, kids coming out of high school, college, and um, they're sitting on the couch and going, I don't have any money. And they don't have a child and they don't have a job. There's plenty of jobs out there for you to get. There's plenty of work. Well, I don't want to do that job. Well, then you don't need the money bad enough uh, for you to do a job that you don't like doing for a temporary, uh, you know, just temporarily. And you know, it's just the way it is. Uh, you got to do something temporarily to help you get over the hump so that you can do something that you really want to do. Um, you can, uh, you know, you know, waste your time, spend your time doing other stuff. And if it's not making money so that you can do the thing that you need to do in order to make more money, then you're telling yourself a lie. Uh, and you need to figure out how you can do that because there is always a way. Um, I, I, I just don't have faith and trust in people that say I couldn't do it because I didn't have enough money. Well, why didn't you have enough money? Did you do what it took to get the money to be able to do what it is you want to do? And the answer is probably no, <laughs> they did not. So that's a lie. You can find it. All right. Number eight, I don't know where to start. All right. Well, ask somebody. You need a mentor. You need somebody in your life. Find somebody in your circle or out of your circle that knows where to start. Who is that person? What is it you want to do? You want to be an actor? Then find somebody that knows where to start 
to get some acting jobs? What do you do first? Where do you go next? How do you find contacts? What is it that I need to know? If you don't, if you, if you don't get access to the internet, are you kidding me? There's no reason to not know something. <laughs> you can just go on the internet and Google it. Hey, you can just type in, where do I start to be an actor? Where do I start to be a plumber? Where do I start to be a network marketer at the sale? You ask somebody, you go forward. This is a dumb excuse and I've heard it. I've literally heard it. And, uh, uh, I won't say because they're probably watching, but there's people in my circle who have said, well, I just don't know where to start. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that's a lie you're telling yourself. You do. You start with a Google search. You start with contacting somebody that knows. Um, I put something out. I was having a private conversation with somebody about um, some product or something like that. And I go, oh, I happen to know the owner. Uh, and I interviewed them and they go, wow, you know everybody. How, you know, how do you do that? Uh, I asked them. <laughs> I contacted them. Well, how did you contact them? I found a way to contact them. I either got a phone number. I got a, uh, they found their profile on Facebook. I found their profile on LinkedIn. Um, I knew somebody that knew them. All the people that I've interviewed um, over the last four years, well, three years since Facebook Live has been around and I was doing it before that. All the people that I found to interview and found to connect with, I reached out to somebody or I did a search or found them on, on social media and, and just asked them, Hey, would you be on my show? Hey, would, um, you know, I'm interested in what it is you're doing. I have a show called the Facebook live. I created shows. I created a show called the Facebook Live TV show so I can contact people in social media marketing so that I can interview them and get to know them and, and have a contact with them. Uh, I got on stage because of that in San Diego at a network marketing or a, a, uh, a, a marketing, um, uh, event where I was a featured speaker at the event. And uh, it was crazy that I was featured because I only three weeks earlier, I didn't know anything about the subject matter that I was speaking on. That was, that was Facebook live. And so that's how I know all these things are lies because I was able to get featured on a stage in front of three, 400 people um, as the featured speaker and leading expert in Facebook live. I'd only been doing Facebook live for three weeks at the time. And I, uh, and there I was speaking on stage. So uh, I, that's how I know that this is a lie. I, I, I you, you do, you do know where to start. You start with a search. You start with asking somebody, you start with contacting somebody wherever they are uh, in the world and say, Hey, I'm interested in what it is you're doing. Where do I start? You ask them and they will tell you where to start. So you do know where to start. That's a lie. All right. Uh, and number nine, the last one, I need to have a college degree BS. <laughs> you don't need a college degree. I haven't heard that one lately, but I have heard it from time to time. Uh, well, I need to go to college first. No. How many multi-millionaires and billionaires have never stepped one foot in a college? Just look around. Uh, it's because they took action and they did something about it and they learned it. There are so many people right now that are multi-millionaires and not that money, uh, you know, make validates their status, but money seems to follow authority and, and, and people who have found their niche in certain, in, in certain subject matter. And so when you find that place where you are be, the authority and you are the go-to person, the money will then begin to follow. And so one of the things that you can look at is, uh, you know, find out who the billionaires and millionaires are and find out that they go to college. Some of them did, absolutely. Uh, but there's many of them who did not. Uh, and so that is not a requirement. That is a lie. You do not need a college degree because college, well, high school and college simply teach you how to get a job from my perspective, my point of view. Now I've gone to college. I've gone to several colleges. Uh, I became a police officer and I had no idea how to, I had no idea where to begin or where to start. Somebody told me where to start. So I went there and I started and then I went to the next step. And then I asked the next person, what am I supposed to do here? Somebody told me and I went to the next step. Next thing you know, I'm a cop. Next thing, I'm I'm the leading authority in police canine training. I had no idea what police canine training involved before I became a cop, but then I became a cop, and then I asked somebody, and then I followed people around, and I began to know stuff as I began to follow the next person and introduce myself to the next leader and um, authority in, in police dog training, and I followed them around and and flew to different states and countries to to learn from the best just by simply asking who the best is and, and going to that place, and that's simply how I did it, and uh, there was nothing that was going to stop me. None of those things that I need a college degree for. I, I now charge $400 an hour to testify in court cases uh, and advise people in relationship to dogs. So being able to charge $400 an hour uh, with no college degree in the area should show you that you don't need a college degree. <laughs> you just need to take action and you need to just grow your knowledge 
and in in um in engross yourself is that the word i'm looking for uh in everything that has to do with that subject matter and just it, it just becomes your life and uh and you will eventually become the leading authority of that thing uh and that was like uh you know a 10-year plan for the dog training stuff and then again to be on stage talking about facebook live it's because i i knew how to do it from my previous and so things get faster after you've done it once you can now repeat it faster and do things much quicker so becoming a leading authority in the police dog training world it took maybe 10 15 years for me to do that and then to become a leading authority in net net um uh live broadcasting on facebook and facebook live took me three weeks right so the the knowledge i took and uh, from from knowing how to do it in one area easily fit into another area and i was able to use it there so if you're going to get on this path of wellness, both physically and mentally, you need to stop telling yourself a lie. If it has to do with weight, that's just how I am. You know, I don't know where to get started. Um, I'm too old to now lose weight. I'm too old to change the way that I feel. A lie. I felt like crap a year and a half ago. It felt like crap. I was on four different pharmaceuticals. I didn't feel well. And, uh, uh, and I thought this is just how I'm going to live. I'm now too old. Um, I am. What else can I use there? I don't know enough about how to make myself well. I'm going to leave that to Kaiser Permanente. That was a lie I told myself. Um, I can't do this anymore because I was in so much pain. I thought, well, I can't go to the gym anymore. I can't play with the kids anymore. That was a lie I was telling myself. And um, let's see, there's another one. Um, maybe a little bit. I'm too old. I think I said that one already, though. Oh, I don't have enough money. At the time, I was broke. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, so. And those are some of the lies I was telling myself. I'm not, and I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough to be able to do this because that's just, I, I've, I've worn myself out and I'm, I'm not good enough to change the way that I feel. And then here I am a year and three months later after taking CBD, going through that gateway of wellness, beginning my process of, I'm going to take the next step and the next step, little incremental steps, not trying to bite off too much. And here I am a year and two months later, I feel younger than I've ever felt uh, that I, that I can remember. I'm healthier than I've ever been. Uh, I've had extensive blood tests done and they all came back positive. Everything that, uh, that was tested in my blood came back within range. Um, and my heart, I just went on a stress test with my, and tested my heart. And they said, my heart is as healthy as it can be. As a matter of fact, my heart is the heart of a younger person than, than my age. And, uh, and I'm not sure I could have said that uh, a year and a half ago. I felt horrible. I was sicker than a dog and in pain all the time constantly getting sick, uh, taking Advil, Tylenol, Motrin almost every day in different combinations. And that's where I was living about a year and a half ago. That's all changed because I stopped telling myself the lies. All right. So I want you to stop telling yourself one or more of those lies and get going on the next phase of life. All right. So that's it for me here at today's wellness, today's CBD and wellness. <laughs> podcast. I'm going to get the name, the name right. Don't forget to go to, uh, to today's Viseo.com, today's CBDoil.com and strategic marketing today.com. Those are all of our sponsors. Uh, just check them out, visit, buy something, get something, and then I'll see you at the next podcast. All right. Take care. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. do it right to take their business to the next level by relying on trusted brands to get the job done. Lowe's is here to help and help you save. For your next stain job, get a gallon of Valspar One Coat Transparent Stain Plus Sealer starting at $35.98. And we now offer the Little Giant King Combo Ladder, the world's first step, extension, and leaning ladder, giving you the flexibility to do just about any job for only $159. For trusted brands that make the job easier, do it right for less. Start with Lowe's, U.S. only.